Man and fish have been linked for sustenance and recreation since the beginning of time. So much so that a world without fish would be unthinkable. Fish are wild creatures as magnificent as any animals on Earth and a natural resource that enhances the quality of our lives. And yet the marine world has been misunderstood and disrespected for so many decades that some of our most important commercial fish stocks have collapsed and fragile marine ecosystems damaged. The sea's ability to sustain us and our planet is in jeopardy if harmful fishing practices and attitudes are not reversed. Just as our natural resources and wildlife on land are limited, the sea does not hold an endless supply of fish. As stewards of our planet, it is our responsibility to protect and conserve these marvelous beings today and for generations to come. In a world older and more complete than ours, they move finished and complete, gifted with the extensions of the senses we have lost or never attained, living by voices we shall never hear. They are not brethren. They are not underlings. They are other nations caught with ourselves in the net of life and time. Founded by conservation-minded anglers in 1973, the National Coalition for Marine Conservation, or NCMC, has worked tirelessly and exclusively on marine fish issues with one singular purpose, to preserve the health of the resource so there will always be plenty of fish in the sea. A respected leader in marine conservation, NCMC has had a huge influence on how people think about fish and how they go about tackling fish issues. By keeping focus on the fish, it's allowed us to build alliances and bridge, um, build bridges between environmental groups and fishing groups, whether they are recreational and commercial. You know, we've been in a unique position to do that, to bring these groups together. We've realized that as we've expanded our knowledge of marine life, it's really expanded our, our circle of concern for all marine life because we realize that everything is connected. We try to define the problems that are out there and we assess what are the risks from this um, you know, to, the, to the ocean, to ocean life, to fishing. We can then take that to whether it's to the, uh, the fishery managers, to other organizations and you know, you're presenting somebody with not just a problem but a solution to it and you're much more likely to get some action. Man. NCMC's concern for large open ocean predators is evident in their conservation efforts, among which are the tunas, swordfish, billfish, and sharks. Thanks to the effectiveness of NCMC's Bring Back the Big Fish program, Regulations have been passed in the last decade that protect these ocean giants from overfishing and indiscriminate fishing practices, thereby increasing their populations. For example, up until the 1960s, swordfish were sustainably caught by commercial and sport fishermen using harpoons and rod and reel. But this once plentiful fish almost disappeared from coastal waters in the 70s and 80s with the growth of commercial longlining the practice of dropping multi-hook baited lines in the deep sea for stretches of 20 to 45 miles. Faced with the equivalent of an underwater minefield, the swordfish had little chance of survival. And by the 1990s, the adult population had dropped by 66%, according to U.S. fishery scientists. Adding insult to injury, these drift long lines caught other species of big fish, including white marlin, blue marlin, bluefin tuna, sharks and dolphin fish, not to mention a wide array of other accidental bycatch like endangered turtles and seabirds. Precisely because they sit at the top of the food chain, the population decline of these apex predators has devastating consequences for the rest of the ecosystem. 
And though much is left to be done, the NCMC and its allies have made great strides in their efforts to conserve big fish. By the late 1990s, we had successfully gotten the International Tuna Commission, which manages Swordfish 2 in the Atlantic, um, to put in place the first real um, cutbacks in, in ocean-wide fishing for swordfish. There were substantial reductions made by 1999 in the Atlantic-wide catch of swordfish, and at the same time at home, we got some very large areas off the southeast that had been identified as swordfish nursery areas where there were tremendously high levels of, of catch and discards of juvenile swordfish, and this was having retarding the um, the recovery of swordfish. So those things happening at the same time really meant that within five years uh, the swordfish population had rebounded to the, uh, the target level. You know, we have to hold the standard that we're measuring there is that we've really protected a lot of fish by, by keeping that gear out of these areas. And they should not return until we can, they can guarantee that they will be able to fish in a, in a cleaner way and continue to protect those fish. It was really a wonderful thing to see the recovery of this, this fishery. When they closed the long lining down, uh, it took about a decade, but fishing has now come back very strong. We're seeing average size of swordfish now exceeding 100 pounds in terms of average weight, and uh, catch rates have ballooned again. Despite these accomplishments, big fish efforts are continuously challenged as evidenced by recent decisions affecting giant bluefin tuna, the highly prized target of the international sushi industry. You look at a fish that is never in the history of the world been in lower supply, and world demand has never, ever been higher. So simple supply and demand economics suggests that that fish has the potential for calamity, and unless the world groups together and puts a moratorium or a much lower quota on the bluefin tuna, I don't see much success of its, of its survivability. Seeing their impact in the east, the NCMC turned its attention to the west, successfully assisting in banning long lines in large areas off the Pacific coast. Since then, NCMC has joined other organizations in an effort to keep indiscriminate and wasteful fishing practices out of Pacific waters. Though big fish regulation is well underway in the United States, certain species continue to be depleted because of consumer demand both in the U.S. and abroad. In fact, America's health-conscious effort to eat more fish has put Pacific marlin at risk of extinction. In an effort to save billfish populations, NCMC teamed up with like-minded organizations to launch the Take Marlin Off the Menu campaign. The United States has a responsibility to do everything it can to conserve marlin. By raising the profile within the United States, we can make billfish conservation a priority of the U.S. government as it participates in international fishery commissions in the Pacific. We have a Marlin Free pledge that restaurants and chefs can sign on to to say that they are, you know, they're taking the pledge not to serve Marlin at their restaurants. And whenever you can find a fish that captures the public's imagination and attention, uh, you can bring more people to paying attention to what's going on in the ocean and caring about it. They have a tremendously important economic value to uh, the recreational fisheries in the United States. Again, these catch and release fisheries that have a negligible impact on the stocks, but because of the amount of fishing actually provides uh, you know, many, many millions of dollars and jobs to the U.S. economy.